get on my things and be raised. And I Yeah. 
Lakes, Michigan. No. Grand Lake over Oklahoma. I'm about to say, that'd be a heck of a turnaround right there. Don't. Well, our buddies had a camper or a cabin up there. They're, they always take their grandkids. But their grandkids are busy showing cows, so they opened up a spot. So I, I think we've got like 50, 50 catfish. Sunday and how things come together and your plans, your purpose, and the glorious resurrection that we all celebrate. We pray, God, that you brought your spirit through this worship team in a mighty, powerful way as we bless you. Ask in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Trying on a new bridle here. I went from a one ear to a two ear, so it's going to take me a little bit to get that put together. I'm trying not to eat it. That's the main thing. What's well, got a good memory? Well, <laughs> good to see everybody this morning. I'm glad you're here. Is that kind of maybe we get that set up? Had a great turnout last night, I've been told. Maybe too much fun. They said, don't wave at your neighbor this morning. You might buy something. Amen. Made about $6,000. Yeah. Which tells me either you're praising Jesus or you got a sweet tooth, and I don't know which one, but looking to see how that's used for the kingdom. That's a... That was seed money last night for an investment coming in June for the Rodeo Bible Camp. So glad that you participated in that and the event. And uh, got a lot of exciting things happening. We're going to have a baptism, close the service. We got some baby dedications this morning and excited about those things. But I, I want to tell you something that's maybe not so exciting. Tracy Gordon had a, an accident this last week with a horse and ends up, long story, a lot of details. You have to ask her when she gets back. She's still in a burn center because of wound care that she needs for her arm, but she was bit by a stud horse that peeled the skin off of her shoulder down to her wrist. And it was a, just a freak accident of how it came together. It was really a... You know, there's so many words I can't even describe what we, we experienced, but Steve and I were there at the hospital when they first brought her in, and without much, if any, pain medicine, she was just as tough as she could be and had already seen the Lord do several things through this process and was watching and praying. I know several of you are on the the text line that Shelly sends out that lets people know what's going on to some degree and how to pray. So we, I know the family is super grateful and thankful for the prayers. So we go from a rejoicing to a mourning, but God is, is going 
with them through this. And they're in such a good place. At the same time, you know, they, they run a lot of, they got a lot of projects going everywhere. So Angel has a sign-up sheet of different times and things. If you're able to be of assistance at all, uh, obviously meals won't be an issue anytime soon because I'm, what I understand is maybe four to five weeks still in Springfield before they make their, their time back. She's got a wound back on her arm now. She'll be getting skin grafts later. They thought that maybe they could save the sleeve and put it back on, but it didn't work out that way. But they've got, I don't know, a couple hundred dogs that they raise in kennel type stuff and a lot of different activities. So if there's something like that that you're able for half a day or whatever, you can see Angel after service today and kind of help coordinate some of that. But in the meantime, absolutely prayers and thanksgiving for what the Lord has done. So I'd like to have you join me in prayer, please. <clears throat> Lord, we worship you. God, we worship you when things are going good and, and when they're not. And God, we see just a roller coaster of things that we go through. And I thank you, God, for your faithfulness. Thank you, God, that even though we can't anticipate what's about to happen, good or bad, that you never leave us or forsake us. Lord, I'm thankful that you're walking through this with Chad and Tracy and that the provisions that have already been shown in mercy, we rejoice in that, God. Lord, for the baptism that we're honored to be able to participate in this morning. God, for Palm Sunday, the beginning of the week, that we begin thinking about the sacrifice and the things that you set up intentionally, so methodically detailed in the way that you would bring an eternal solution to our damn souls. God, we are nothing without you. But with the knowledge we have of Jesus Christ, that we have eternity and we have life and potentially to the fullest as we walk in the Spirit. We bless you, Lord, praying for a mighty move of your hand this morning as we honor you, Lord. In Christ's name we ask it. Amen. Amen. Good morning, Corner Post Cowboy Church. It is good to have everybody here. We were gone last Sunday, and I missed you. I miss being in church with you, and it's good to be here. It's good to see all of the visitors. If this is your first time at Corner Post, we are so glad to have you here and want you to make yourself at home, and we have a special gift for you. It is on, in the foyer as you walk out, there are some blue bags, and if we don't catch you and hand you one, please pick one up and take it with you as your gift this morning. Our pastor um, is over here while we sing congregational songs. And if you need prayer this morning, that's the most important thing here, that we get in touch with the Lord and that we let him work in our lives and make a change, bring us help and give us hope in our needs. We love the Lord this morning. We're glad to have him here. We want the Holy Spirit to be here and work in our lives, work in our hearts as the pastor brings the message. And as we sing these songs, we want to be encouraged. Jesus Christ paid the ultimate price that you and I can have our sins forgiven. He shed blood. He knew it was going to happen. It was a traumatic thing. He prayed to his father and said, please, if there's any other way, let's do it now because I realize what's getting ready to happen. And he shed drops of blood, but he knew that we needed him as a savior. If you don't know him this morning, don't turn him down. Let him come in and save you and cover your sins and give you a new life. He will bless you and you will never regret that decision. Let's stand up this morning and sing at Calvary. <laughs> Spit and vanity and pride, caring not, my Lord was crucified, knowing not it was for me. He died on Calvary. Mercy there was great, and grace was free. Pardon there was multiplied to me. at Calvary. By God's 
Savior, kneel. Kneel at the cross and ask him to forgive you of your sins, and he is so willing to do that. He is just waiting, just waiting in his love to take you in and change your life. Hallelujah. Kneel at the cross. Christ will meet you there. Come while he waits for you. Listen to his voice. Leave with him your care and be the life of me. Kneel at the cross. Leave every care. Kneel at the cross. Jesus will meet you.
before we go into our shake hands song, because I know you guys are raring to go meet people that you don't know and shake their hands and introduce yourself. Uh, <laughs> Not next Sunday, but the Sunday after that, for anybody that has volunteered for Rodeo Bible Camp, we're going to have a volunteer meeting right after church service. That is April the 7th. Not next Sunday, but the Sunday after that. If you volunteered, please uh, stick around because we got lots of things to talk about. Hey, Ricky, so. before we start, we do need to say next Sunday is Easter. This is, this is uh, the Sunday before Easter, and we are having a sunrise service here at Corner Post Cowboy Church. We'll be meeting here about 645. Then we're going to have a potluck breakfast afterwards. Then we're going to have singing, and we're going to have some word. And then we're going to have a little egg hunt with the kids after church. So if you don't have a place to go or don't have any plans for Easter, come spend the whole morning with us, and we'll have a good time. We'll have fellowship. Thanks. That's right. All right, go find somebody you don't know and say good morning and you love them. Well, oh, I fell asleep, oh, I joy divine, leaning on the everlasting arms. I have blessed peace with my Lord and dear, leaning on the everlasting arms.
C for C. 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 Lord, you know me, and you always will. Oh, you keep me, you hold me close. Like new mercies in the morning still, you surround me, and all I know is every hour of every day. change every moment in every way oh I need you Lord and that will never change that will never change you're my fortress you're my hiding place you're the shelter where I am saved, and you have freed me, and you have called me by name, my Redeemer, my saving grace, every hour of every day. Oh, I need you, Lord, and that will never change. This song is worth five dollars, Pops. So I don't have your favorite one because Ben, I didn't know it, but I'll, I'll do this one for you, okay? Well, some people still they cheat, they lie for wealth and what? it can buy but don't they know on the judgment day that gold and silver will melt away well i'd rather be in a deep dark grave and know that my poor soul was saved Than to live in this world in a house of gold And deny my God and do my soul
What good is gold and silver too? If your heart's not good and true, oh sinner, heed me when I say, fall down upon your knees and pray. Well, I'd rather be in a deep, dark grave. And knew that my poor soul was saved Than to live in this world in a house of gold And deny my God and do my soul And deny my God and do my soul. Who am I that the highest king would welcome me? I was lost, but he brought me, oh, his love for me, oh, his love for me. Who the sun sets free, oh, is free. I'm a child of God, yes I am. Free at last, He has ransomed me, His grace runs deep. While I was a slave to sin, Jesus died for me. Yes, He died for me, who the Son sets free, oh, is free indeed. I'm a child of God, yes, I am. In my Father's house, there's a place for me I'm a child of God Yes, I am I am chosen, not forsaken I am who you say I am You are for me, not against me I am who you say I am. I am chosen, not forsaken. I am who you say I am. You are for me, not against me. I am who you say I am. Lord, I am who you say I am. Who the sun sets free, oh, is free indeed. I'm a child of God, yes, I am. In my Father's house, there's a place for me. I'm a child of God, yes I am. In my Father's house, there's a place for me. I'm a child of God, yes I am. I'm a child of God, yes I am. Stay in deep. Uh, 
I hear the Savior say, Thy strength indeed is small. Child of weakness, watch and pray. Find in me thine all in all. And Jesus paid it all. And all to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain. He washed it white as snow. Lord, now indeed I find thy power in thine alone can change the leper's spots and melt the heart of stone cause jesus paid it all all to him i owe sin had left a crimson stain he washed you white as snow And when before the throne I stand in Him complete, Jesus died my soul to save, my lips shall still repeat. Jesus paid it all, all to Him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain, he washed you white as snow, he washed you white as snow. Oh, praise the one who paid my debt and raised his life up from the dead. Oh, praise the one who paid my debt and raised his life up from the dead oh praise the one who paid my debt and raised his life up from the dead oh praise the one who paid my debt and raised his life up from the dead Jesus paid it all, all to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain, he washed it white as snow. He washed it white as snow. Lord Jesus, we just thank you so much for this day, God. We thank you for each and every person that's in our presence, Lord. We just feel you already, Lord, in the worship, God, and we just know that we're going to feel you through the Spirit and the Word, God, and we just pray our our blessings upon our pastor, Lord, as he comes to us with the Word that you've given him, God, and I just pray, Lord, right now that it touches and blesses each and every person in this place. In Jesus' holy name I pray, amen. We've got a couple of dedications to do this morning, 
and see if I can find where Adrian's at. Is she over? There you go. Okay, right in the middle. Good deal. And is Athena the oldest? And Persephone is going to get carried. Persephone. Okay, it's better than the first time I pronounced it. fixing to find out we're gonna pray for you we're gonna pray for you and your sister Lord we lift up this girl both Athena and her sister sister thanking you God for the love that we have in Jesus and father that you would dedicate these children to your service that you would rise them up to be mighty women and spiritual soldiers for your purpose God, we pray the gifts of the Holy Spirit for what would lead to salvation when they're old enough to receive you in fullness, God, for the parents and grandparents and the family, the church to rally around and to protect and to grow and to minister and raise these children on your behalf. We thank you, God, for the love that you have for them and the purpose for which you have sent, that they would be able to carry your light into a dark place. And I thank you, Lord, for these girls. In the name of Jesus, amen. You did good, honey. You're welcome. Love having the kids and the folks that bring them. That's right. She's going to come one up. I've got another one on this side of the house. And I think maybe mom and dad or one of the others got something to say. Is that right? And then we'll have the rest of the family come up and pray too. Ready. (laughs) We want to speak uh, Galatians 5.22 over Gunner, which includes the fruits of the Spirit. And we want to ask the Lord to break all generational curses. And we also want to ask him to uh, give us the guidance in raising and discipline him. They had to mention the D word. Okay. Well, come on up, grandparents. and Or we come in agreement to dedicate Gunner to your service that like the plan that you've made for his family to rise up and to serve you first. I thank you, God, for the legacy that's led here, praying for future salvation, for the guidance, the wisdom, the knowledge for the parents, grandparents to support and to come around. We thank you, Lord, for this day, this privilege that we have for praying over Gunner in the name of Jesus. Amen. going to be starting off in Isaiah chapter 30, verse 18, and I'll give you 
a few moments to see if you can figure out what the message is. Y'all thought that muck boots were bad, didn't you? I told the Lord this was a bad idea. But he didn't listen. Because I don't know if you really see it the way that the scriptures got it written. And you might think this is a bit of a stretch for cowboy message, but I think the last time I wore these, I put them on to bring a lightning struck cow out of the pond. So it could be kind of cowboy attire. Depends on what translation you're reading out of. The NLT reads a little bit different from the NIV. But I'll start with the NIV as it says. Yet the Lord, yet the Lord longs to be gracious to you. Therefore he will rise up to show you compassion. For the Lord is a God of justice, blessed are all who wait on him. The NLT would say, yet the Lord waits to be gracious to you. And as I put that together, I remember several years ago, I was asking the Lord, I said, Lord, what are you waiting on? And my response was, I'm waiting on you. And then I found this verse just a few, I don't know if it was hours or days later, but it spoke to me because God waits on those who wait on him. So I'm going to do a little bit of wordplay, which you've already figured out, right? Waiting is a lot like waiting. So... W-A-I-T-I-N-G, waiting, is a lot like waiting. Because the time when you need to wait is usually when you're going through something you don't want to go through. I know you're hearing me breathe, which I guess you know I'm alive. (laughs) So here I am thinking about Jesus as he's preparing to go through the most devastating week of his life. His intent, his purpose, the whole reason that he came was to bring us salvation, something that we could not afford on our own, and he waded through all of the events to get to that place. So as you think about a suit like this, what would spiritual waiters look like? I'm trying to get to a place to see that these keep us dry. They keep us from getting dirty. And even some thermal protection. That when we're waiting on God, as we're waiting through situation, that he is waiting on us to give us what we need to bring us through the situation. You you see, horses obviously wade through water. The resistance that you feel, the struggle, the challenge, the issues of trying to make it through. And if you've ever done that before, you you might even try to hike your legs up so you you don't get wet. And then just by the 
the design of you trying to stay dry, you end up getting wetter than you would have if you just went in. So with that in mind, I want you to be thinking about God waiting on those who wait on him. But then what waiting really looks like for me is a pair of these. We are all going through something. It's difficult. It's hard. It's a challenge. You don't even know how you're going to make it through. And the state of mind that we have to have to be able to get it through to the other side in the way that God blesses us for it. And whether it's Tracy going through a horrendous tra tragedy, but with the Lord, she's going to come through it. Many of you are probably reflecting back to injuries that you've had, or maybe what some of the expectant mothers have gone through, and their parents. You know, how all that stuff kind of follows through with husband and wife and families and the, you're waiting you're waiting for the kids and then you'll be waiting on them the rest of your of their lives we're, we're constantly waiting I, I don't know if you realize how much of the the crossover between waiting and waiting but we're constantly going through things waiting on God to do stuff stuff for us and we don't even realize it's up to us to do it but it's how we do it that he designs if you're waiting on God to fix your problems, it's not going to happen. If you're waiting for God to give you everything you need, it's not going to happen. You have an obligation, a duty, a requirement to be obedient to his word, to be even prepared, take the time to assemble what he has designed for us to be able to persevere. But I watch people go through difficult things all on their own, and God is faithful. But how much more efficient it would have been had people been able to wade, to wade through it, to go through it, to accept it. That's what's, I'm kind of playing back and forth between these couple of verses. It's uh, God waits on those who wait on him in Isaiah 30, 18. But then I think about Isaiah 40, 31, when it says that, they will mount up on wings as eagles. Those who, back up, it starts off with, those who wait on the Lord will mount up on wings as eagles. They will run and not be weary. They will walk and not faint. Think how hard it is when you're going through this much water to, to rise above it, to run through it, to move. I mean, even the, the pressure of the suit starts squeezing in all around you, and you feel the resistance of all the events on the outside, and God pulls us up out of that that we could run and not be weary, that we can push through, wade through, and make it. So I wanted you to have that background thought before we start looking at a passage in Luke 22 that talks about Jesus' last week. Now, this would be the Sunday that Hosanna, laying out the palm branches, the cloaks on the road, all the things that they would have been shouting and praising his triumphal entry over. But every day had significance of this week in preparation for the resurrection. And Jesus waded through all of those events. So in Luke 22, it starts with Judas agrees to betray Jesus. This was a prophecy. This was coming through. Jesus has the Last Supper. He's... The last fellowship meal he's going to have with his disciples before the crucifixion. He's teaching, he's showing, he's demonstrating. He is intentional, very clear about showing them that what they thought was a, a physical solution ends up being an eternal solution that comes back to being a physical solution. But the disciples were watching. The disciples were waiting. They were eager. They were anticipatory. They were expecting a Messiah. They thought that Jesus would come and take militant rule over the Romans and defeat them and give them temporary relief. And they were distraught when he did not. And I think sometimes when we're waiting, when we're going through situations, that we expect God to show up in a way that our mind works. And it's not 
the Isaiah 55, that his thoughts are higher than our thoughts or his ways are higher than our ways. We're expecting him to do what we think we want done. In fact, we sometimes maybe treat him more like a genie in the bottle than we do our eternal creator, Messiah, and Savior. That his plan, because even if you put these on, doesn't mean you're not going to get wet. Realizing that we do have strategies and techniques and equipment to help keep us dry and to get through something, you still have to go through resistance. You still have to go through the issues, the problems, and the challenges. So I want you to kind of see some of that as we start looking at this part of Jesus praying. And this prayer is actually, it's, it's more fleshed out in John 17. But Luke 22 has details that John doesn't, so I want to use it first as I pick up in verse 39. Luke 22, 39 says, Jesus went out as usual to the Mount of Olives, and his disciples followed him. On reaching the place, he said to them, Pray that you'll not fall into temptation. He withdrew about a stone's throw beyond them, knelt down and prayed. Father, if you're willing, take this cup from me, yet not my will, but yours be done. An angel from heaven appeared to him and strengthened him. I want to stop with that just to kind of show you as I'm imagining Jesus withdrawing from his disciples. He knows he's about to go through something. Jesus was very candid in his explanation. He would say, I only do what I see the Father do, and I only say what I hear the Father say, that this Mount of Olives, and because of an Easter message I did several years ago, I prefer to call it the Mount of Olives, because that's where Jesus found his peace. That's where Jesus waited on the Lord. He would go, he would humble himself, he'd get quiet, he would withdraw, he would spend time to suit up, to be ready to wade through the things that God the Father would have for him. And he did this regularly, and he asked his disciples to do it with them. Hey, we're fixing to go into the, into the pond to get, a, to get a cow out. I need you guys to get ready, get suited up, let's go, let's get ready. And Jesus comes back after he gets his on, he finds them sleeping. They're not, even, they're not even ready, they have no idea what Jesus is about to go through. And so many times that when catastrophe strikes, it just, it changes everything. But to not be prepared to wade and wait on the Lord. This has to be an intentional, premeditated, premeditated thought process of, I need, I, God, I need you. God, I can't do this on my own. Lord, I need you to show me, to prepare me, to call me, to, to equip me to get through this thing because I can't do it. Just the, the utter helplessness and the, the chaos, confusion that comes, but the peace of God that God waits. He is, and I don't know if he's, standing up in heaven on a cloud and he's got his wings folded and he's pacing back and forth and he's he's waiting he's watching he's looking at each one of your lives and situations he's just waiting on you to to submit to surrender to bow down to ask to allow god is waiting on those who wait on him and as we're going through it he's going through it with us that maybe the waiters or his Holy Spirit that we step into. Maybe it's the, the presence, the comfort of God that we find to get through these perilous situations in our life. He's so just and so faithful. I'm watching Jesus as he's, he knows he's about to start something that is beyond, I'm going to say, I think it's beyond human acknowledgement. I don't think we can even fathom what Jesus went through. You see Mel Gibson's attempt in doing a video, a film on the passion, and how hard that is to watch. But Jesus, Isaiah 53, said that he was beaten beyond the recognition of a man. Couldn't even tell which man or that he was a man. So how do you, how do you go through that? How do you mentally prepare so many of the events that happen to us? We don't know in advance. You know, to think about the, the injury, the thing that you may be going through now that you just got done going through or whatever that is. If you knew what you were about to go through before you went through it, 
how would that go for you? You know, and I, I can't, I just can't quit thinking about what Tracy's going through right now. But had she known that a week ahead of time, a day ahead of time, to have that amount of trauma all on her at once, she had no idea what was coming. But if she had, she would have had a little bit clearer idea of what Jesus was going through because Jesus knew it and did it anyway. You know, a situation where you're working around horses. I'm telling you, if you're a horse lover and you've been around horses much, you've been injured. You've been hurt. Horses hurt you. But if you knew that this one horse was going to hurt you, you'd get rid of it right before it did. You know, I can remember horses I've had over the years. I'd, I started off with the economy econo models, right? Economy models. They're the ones I could afford. It means they weren't broke, they weren't trained, and they weren't very nice. They didn't like people, typically when I bought them. Uh, one of the horses I remember hurt me, hurt my brother-in-law. Uh, we both still kind of walk funny from it, him a little bit more than me. Uh, I named him Cricket because he was real jumpy, and I knew that when I got him. And if I'd have known right before my last blow-up on a horse, I wouldn't have got on. All the things, if you had just had that foresight of what was about to happen, that, oh, man, I'm going to have to go through this, I'm going to have to do that, and it isn't worth it, I'll just get, ah, I don't even want to deal with it. Jesus is staring in the face. He, is, he has been waiting his whole creation to do this thing and he's waiting and waiting and as he goes through it, it says just I don't know if you can picture it he withdrew a stone's throw away from his disciples so maybe from here to the back corner maybe from here to the doors he's just far enough away from his disciples he withdrew, he's by himself. Because what's, what's happening about when you're actually waiting on the Lord, you are, you're alone. You have to do it for you. Now, there might be people with you, but nobody can express, for example, can understand, can communicate, can even sympathize with Tracy right now. You can't do it. She has to do it on her own. But at the same time, Chad's there and working with stuff, and, and friends are helping, and you have that kind of partnership, you know, but they're, they're at a distance. God has us waiting, and it's a very intimate, it's a very personal, it's a very one-on-one -on -one thing, and Jesus is there. He's, he's knelt down, and, is pr and he's praying because he sees what's coming, and even ask, Lord, is there any way to take this cup from me? Let it pass, but not my will, but yours be done. That he relinquishes his control and gives it back to the Father. And then remember the Isaiah 30, 18, God waits on those who wait on him. So I would ask you, you can ask it of yourself, individually, what is God waiting on? What is he waiting on for you so that you can wait on him? As we're wading through that process, you see what happens even after he prayed <clears throat> that he gives God total control. Lord, this is, this is your situation. Deal with it however you see fit. It doesn't say it like that, but he has released the obligation. He has accepted the calling, and he is going to fulfill his creation, the purpose which he was created. He's going to fulfill that, and look how God shows up. Beyond, I would imagine, what anybody could expect, an angel from heaven appeared to him and strengthened him. Now, I don't know how angels work. I don't know that we always get to see. And there's a, you know, even as Chad was ex kind of giving me some examples of, of how, 
Tracy wasn't alone whenever this happened. Had she been alone, it would have been an even harder thing. The ambulance was close by because there was a person reported to have an AR-15 out by this, the racetrack. And when the ambulance and the police got out there, there wasn't anybody. And I thought, wow, do angels carry AR-15s? I'd like to think that mine do, but I don't know how that works, you know, how that's set up. But for whatever reason, God had an ambulance there close to where they could drive and meet him. And all these different angelic things that happen. And, and I don't know if we even get to, to see it or to know it. You know, the time that maybe Gideon sees him marching in the treetops or that Elijah and Elisha start to witness, we have different peppering of accounts throughout Scripture of angelic interaction in our lives. I don't know how it works, but I know that God is just. I know that he gives us what we need, and I know that sometimes when I don't find myself having the ability to do something, that I feel strengthened, that I feel that encouragement, because when we are going through desperate times, if we will allow... God will go through it with us. And I'm so encouraged by that, to be able to share that. I've seen it in my life, not always understood it. I want to see it going forward, but I would like to get to place God. Whatever thing I'm praying through, I'm going down a road I don't want to go through. How many times I say, Lord, I don't want to do this. But if I could get to the point where, Lord, I want to, I want to go through whatever you have intended for me to go through. I will for your glory. And there's a, a decision, kind of like I took to put these on, that I have to, to make a mental, physical, and spiritual shift in my conduct. And I have an obligation to be prepared for. I chose to do it with these, but I wanted you to see this as a very intentional, deliberate decision that I made to do something to be prepared for what may be coming. Now, I don't plan on getting in there. It's not why, I didn't know there was going to be a baptism when I found out I was supposed to do this. All I could see is myself preaching this message with my waiters on. So I did it. And in a minor, very scaled down version, I had to say, okay, Lord, I'm going to give it to you. If it makes me look foolish, I'll look foolish. It won't be the last time. But the angel strengthened him. Even after. Matthew chapter 4, when he's been in time in the, in the wilderness, after he'd been tempted, that the Lord dispatched angels to tend to him. Wow, this thing that, that God, we're wading through you. You know, you can look at Scripture, you can, you can apply this thought, this process to so many different places. Look at Moses crossing the Red Sea. And he waited on the Lord, and he didn't have to wade but he, he, walked, he did go through it. He walked through it as dry ground. But in a lot of ways, that's like spiritual waiting. He went through an impossible situation. And then two other times, maybe the, the Jordan River was the same way, that it'd be struck with the rod Elijah, and it would stop, and they would walk through on dry ground. That God has so many different ways of helping us through difficult situations, trauma, relationships, health, finance, employment, all these different things that we, we have to wade through it. We have to go through it. It's, it's, it's called life. And you might get through one side, but you're going to have another, and it's just this constant reoccurring theme. But how is it that we go through it? You know, in, as a young man, I did it on my own I, as much as possible. I would try to get through it on Mike's logic. It didn't always work out for me. And God would take time. He would wait. He would wait on me until I was ready to wait on him. So I'm seeing that as I look at this, it, it says that in being in anguish, he prayed more earnestly. So this is a really cool concept to me that the, he's, he's distraught, he's broken, he's tired, He's weak in state. He's praying, he's praying, he's praying. The angels come and strengthen him. And when he gets strengthened, what does he do? He goes back to waiting again. He goes right back to prayer. He goes back to trusting God. Even more earnestly, he's seeking, he's praying. And his sweat was like drops of blood falling to the ground. 
all kinds of different translations record this, whether, whether he was sweating drops of blood or if it was so profuse of a sweat, it was like, I don't know. But it was more anguish, I would imagine, than any of us have ever dealt with. And this idea of waiting, 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 going through, pushing through, one step at a time. And when you're wearing these, if you've ever worn something like them, you're in water and you can't see what's going on down there. And you kind of have to do a little bit of this or maybe carry a stick. I would wear these more whenever I was trapping beavers and I'd be trying to find a, a run. And a run, if you're out there in the, the sloughs and river trying to get to where you can find where to set your trap, you can be up to here, step into a run and be up to here. So you kind of, you go at it real careful. You're, you're tiptoeing, you're, you don't know what's going on down here. And the waiting I'm talking about for Jesus didn't know what was going on up here in the, in the heavenlies and the spiritual and the side where it's not a weapon. It's not a, it's not a battle against flesh and blood. It's, it's rulers and principalities and authorities. That, and you can't always see what's going on up there, but it requires us to be in a place where God is waiting. You know, it's not like a waiting room where you're just sitting there, twiddling your thumbs, waiting for the call. Okay, uh, doctor's here to see you. We have to be active. We have to be... We have to be faithful. We have to be walking in a way that is anticipatory of God being there with us, walking through it with us, empowering us, guiding us, discerning, and showing us. It doesn't mean it's easy. It doesn't mean that you, you can even articulate it, capture it with a phrase, and, ex and express it to somebody else. There's nothing that you can tell somebody to get them to understand what you've gone through. It is truly unique to you. You can't really even compare them, whether it's depression, panic, fear, anxiety, if it's a health thing, if it's the whatever, all these different situations we have to go through, you can't really explain that to somebody else. And if you tried, they wouldn't be able to process it. I think it's in uh, 1 Corinthians 1 that talks about no man can know another man's feelings or another man know a person's thoughts. We can have, we get a little bit of overlap maybe as, oh yeah, I can relate to that. I can relate to that. Oh yeah, I had a hangnail once. Okay, well you just had a baby. Oh, well, I had a hangnail. There's really no, you can't compare those. They don't come together. So how do you, you put this? And, and Jesus is, man, just masterfully walking, demonstrating for us how we should take steps and live. You know, we celebrate his resurrection. We're selfish, maybe. I am. Thank you, Lord, that I have eternal life. Thank you, God, for this amazing place you're going to have for us. Thank you, Lord, for the Holy Spirit that you show us how to do things. But I think I'm most thankful that I'm not alone. This idea that even though I just found out about what I'm going through. Just like Tracy just found out what she's got to deal with. She had no idea before Thursday what she's going to have to do that is even possible to have your skin taken off like a shirt sleeve. That, that's not even possible. You, that's just so unfathomable. And where all the nerve endings and the pains, she had no idea what was about to come. And neither did Chad. And Chad's been going through it too. It's such a hard thing to see someone you love. I mean, you, you start watching even with the the mothers going through childbirth and the dads and the family that are watching, it's like, oh, man, it's, it's hard. It's, it, but you, you have to go through it yourself. We all have that thing. We all have, well, it's not singular either. It's because you get done with one and there's something else, and maybe it's a small part of a bigger thing. And Jesus does it masterfully. He sets the model. He shows us how we are to imitate. Philippians 2 talks about us imitating the attitude of Christ that we can rely on his Father the same way that he did. Because of what Jesus did. And so I'm reading this. It just it comes to mind. 45 says, When he rose from prayer and went back to the disciples, he found them asleep, exhausted from sorrow. So this is man's version of waiting on the Lord. They were, they were going through stuff too. They weren't going through the same level that Jesus was going through because they didn't know what Jesus was about to do. But they were exhausted from sorrow. And I'm pretty sure some of you can relate to this. You have gone through a difficult time, a, a relationship, an argument, a situation with all the different things, finance to health to, 
whatever, and it is exhausting. You know what it would be like to walk through four foot of water for 30 minutes? It's exhausting. You go swimming, it's exhausting. I mean, you know that what the, the appetite's like after you get done playing at the, at the creek or the pond or whatever you're, you're out. And it's, just, it's exhausting because of all the resistance we go through. It's waiting. It's waiting on the Lord. It's walking through it. Why are you sleeping, he asked them. Get up and pray so that you'll not fall into temptation. Jesus is arrested. Peter disowns Jesus. It goes on. You know a lot of the details and stories. If you don't, spend the week. It's a great time every day to realize where Jesus was waiting through this situation that he, would be, he, had been, he had been prepped for from the beginning. This was the plan, just like you have a plan, a plan assigned to you. And it's going to involve something that spiritually would be represented like this, and it's going to be uncomfortable, and it's getting a little warm in here. I mean, it's not something that looks real flattering, you know? Do these make my knees look big? You know, that kind of stuff like that. It's just, it's one of those things where you, you have to do what you have to do to get through it, but I'm not sure that we're putting on the armament of what God has done through Jesus, that we don't have to be alone. We don't have to be desperate. We don't have to feel like it's impossible. God waits on those who waits on him. So now my flip of the words, God will wade through what you're wading through. And he's faithful. And he's good. We're going to prepare for the baptism. I'm going to take some of this off. And Adrian, you can get all your stuff situated. You've got plenty of folks to help you with the kiddos, right? good it's exciting great timing so we'll have a, a time of prayer while some of those are getting made lord we thank you for your grace we thank you god for your goodness lord for the <clears throat> the sounds of babies and toddlers in the room god that you are so good the way that you prepare things Lord, I thank you for the picture of what Jesus did ultimately on the cross. Amazing, God, the amount of pain and rejection that he felt. That you secured a path for him, and it was mapped out. It was laid out from the beginning. God, that you have a plan even for us. Lord, that you're walking through this tragedy with Chad and Tracy. Lord, for the unspokens the things that others are going through, that you've not forsaken us, but yet we've been reconciled unto Christ's saving grace through his obedience. God, that we would be as obedient. And we bless you, thanking you for it in the name of Jesus. Amen. I just found a brown recluse. Always check your waiters. <laughs>